Hey everybody, this is Captain X24 bringing you another part of Let's Play Legend of Zelda Spirit Tracks. Alright, um, in this part we're gonna go through the Forest Temple. There's also this thing here. Green, white, green. Hold on. There we go, play it, song. It's an interesting and potentially quite helpful one. But we won't need it yet. Alright, this fairy comes out. Hiya, thanks for summoning me. As a reward for you, for to you for awakening me, I'll lend you my power one time. If you're close to running out of life, play this song and I'll come rescue you. Nifty, huh? Oh, and one more thing, you can't summon me just anywhere. Only a place with strong energy like a temple or the Tower of Spirits. And this thing flies away. Well, we're certainly not going to need it here. You never know when we'll need it. It's a song of healing. Quite different than it was in Majora's Mask, but whatever. Here we are on floor one. We want to go here. Over there, there's a locked door. So the only way we can go is here. Over here, there's nothing. So take one of these chestnuts. And throw it at the switch. That makes a small bridge appear. There's some poison gas. We can't do anything about that. That's okay. Now over here. Oh my, I dropped my stylus. And oh my, the door shuts on us. Got some enemies to kill. This happens a lot in Phantom Hourglass and in Spirit Tracks as well. We got a treasure chest over there. And this allows us to pass through. We definitely don't want to miss the treasure chest, although I think it's just some money. There we go. Oh, that's a lot of money, actually. It's a big green rupee. That's worth 100. Very nice. Very nice indeed. Here we got more of the poison gas. How much we can do about it, really? Except get hurt like a moron. Um, here. Oh, what do you know? Once again, enemies to fight. We got these weird things. They swell up when you hit them, and they explode into a big little cloud. Well, a small little. Big little? How did that make sense? A little cloud of poison gas. And oh my, a big chest. That couldn't possibly be the item of the dungeon. Well, it is the item of the dungeon. I think. Yes, it is. The whirlwind. And we need our microphone again. So, let's see if I can do this. Blow into it. Go over here. Now over here, I don't think these pots have anything special. A heart never hurts though. There's that thing which we can awaken, but it just tries to tell us where the treasure chests are, so... <sighs> what do you know? It clears up the poison gas for us. That can definitely come in handy. And here, this puzzle, this was in like every single trailer. There's the key. How do you get it? Easy. There you go, we got the key. We're back on the first floor, actually. So over here, if we step on this... We will find ourselves somewhere familiar. Because what do you know, right there, there, there's those chestnuts. Attack these enemies, you'll see why in a second. Not a bad idea to clear out this poison gas. <sighs> kind of hard to get that way in the corner, but there's a switch and another treasure chest. We can't do anything about this. We will, in fact, have to return here. It's just called a stamp station, but we have no, uh, no stamp book. We will be getting that soon, I think right before the second dungeon. So don't worry, we'll return here and get that. But we get a big green rupee, that's a hundred. And that's very nice. And now we got our small key, so go through here. Uh, go along this hallway. I don't think there's anything special. Let's see. Here. Yeah, there's nothing here, just some pots. An extra half heart never helps, or never hurts. 
ever helps. That's just... These items, uh... Items? Enemies? Why can't I talk or apparently think? I believe, I'm pretty sure they're bubbles. They've been in a lot of Zelda games. I mean, they've been with the series from the start. So there you go. Don't have to worry about them anymore. I'm pretty sure you do have to use the whirlwind on them. Now go up here. Back up to the second floor. Got more of these stink bugs. I'm not sure what their official name is. I'm just going to call them stink bugs. We can go up here. I don't know if that's the way we're supposed to go quite yet, though. Okay, yeah. That's the way we're supposed to go. So, let's do that. Uh, here. What do you know? A chestnut and, um... One of those, so... Use the whirlwind on the chestnut. Make it hit the switch. What do you know, a treasure chest appears. That can possibly have a small key in it. I hope it does have a small key. Okay, good, I wasn't mistaken. I was like, watch it be 100 rupees or something. Now, we got our small key, so we can go in here. And here, another room with stuff to fight. This is also from one of the trailers, from the E3 trailer. This enemy is called a Mothula. Mothula, Moth Mothula, whatever you want to call it. I'm pretty sure that's its name anyway. I sure hope it is. Um, when it summons in a skull or a bubble, whatever, just um, blow it back and attack it. You, don't do it too early. Um, if it doesn't have the skull, then don't do it because it'll just reflect the whirlwind, stun you, and possibly hurt you. And if it, uh, it hasn't actually fired the skull, it'll just make the skull disappear, and then the whirlwind will bounce off it and back at you. And, you know, that causes all sorts of problems. It drops, usually drops 20 rupees, so... Not bad at all. Here we are in floor 3. Gotta get ourselves... Over there, which if you check the map, you'll know that the boss key is over there. And here is the boss door, I guess. Yeah, starting in Phantom Hourglass, what you actually had to do with the boss key was carry it. Like, well, I don't know, like as if you'd carry like a bomb flower or something. Here you got an interesting enemy. It uh, curls up when you hit it, and it's all spiky, and explodes. <sighs> Makes for some interesting puzzle design. <sighs> Let's see. As far as that's concerned... <sighs> oh, there we go. <sighs> There's a way we can get through. <sighs> and hit that switch. That opens that door over there, which we're going to have to go through to probably hit another switch. I'm pretty sure it's a switch. And then to finally be able to get to that boss key. Now over there, you got the switch we need to hit. Lure these things over here. Not nice. Naughty, naughty. <laughs> ah, crap. There we go. <sighs> Try and get this thing right in right where we need it. Be nice to have it closer by, but <sighs> yeah, that's not gonna make it. So lure the enemy right over here, right where we need it. Okay, that's good enough. And there we go. Finally, that door opens up and we can go get the boss key, which is good because I think that means we have just enough time to go get it. Yeah, the early dungeons in Phantom Hourglass and Spirit Tracks are like ridiculously easy. It almost makes me sad. There's the boss key, or the big key, whatever. If you look at this, it'll show you a pathway you gotta go through to carry the boss key. 
if you step on any of a certain type of tile, those kinds of tiles, a, I think it's called a key master, kind of like a wall master or floor master will appear. And it'll cause all sorts of problems for you. It'll charge after you and it will try and get the key, no matter what. But anyway, toss the key in here. Let it do its thing. Now go into this room here. In Spirit Tracks and Phantom Hourglass, there's a room before the boss that lets you heal up and stuff. Oh, sweet. Sweet. Queet? Jeez, what am I saying? A wood heart, another treasure. Uh, I think we have just enough time for this. Yeah, talk to this. It summons a blue portal, which you can use to get to the entrance. And the next part, we're going to take on the boss. If you like this video, please rate, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you guys then.